what I am. It, for me, it, it's, uh, it makes me a whole person because I was raised with uh, Mechef language. I was born hearing it. I spoke it all my life. And it makes me a whole person. Um, it doesn't seem like any part of me is missing. So when I use my language, when I, when I use it every day, I pray in it. I do uh, all kinds of things with my language. It makes me feel holistic. I am who I am. It's my identity. You know, that's what it is. I can see speaking another language, but for me, uh, Mitchif is, uh, like I said before, it's who I am. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I can take up another language, but it won't be me. It won't be part of my culture. It won't be part of my values, my beliefs, because I was taught when, you know, since I was a baby, everything and anything that I did, uh, we were taught in Mitchef. So that's who and what I am. It's my identity, it's part of my culture, it's part of my values, it's part of my beliefs. It makes me a whole person. I've been teaching language for about 30 years now. Um, I speak my language with anybody that I know speaks Mitchef. And uh, I teach it in the schools. I teach it to my son. I start to teach it to all, anybody that would listen. I do it in the community. I do it, uh, I've been doing it for a lot of years already. I speak to my spouse, uh, my sister-in-law, my brothers, my sisters. Uh, we all speak it. The last two of my sisters, they, they understand it, but they can't speak it, like uh, too much. They know a few words better than that, but they can understand. So I talk to them in Mitchell. So in hopes that it would, uh, they'll pick it up, you know. I've talked to my nieces, my grandkids, anybody that would listen to me. Um, I, I speak it to them. Preferably, I, I like speaking to someone that I meet who uh, has as much knowledge in Mitchell as I am because you can converse, have whole conversations, talk about anything and everything but it doesn't matter who you meet that knows how, as long as you have, you know, even a short conversation is beautiful. Anybody that you meet that could speak that, it is, anybody. I even met a, a little gentleman just out there um, at the lunch hour and uh, I, did, I didn't realize he didn't know how to speak Mitchell, but he came out, he had a biggest smile on his face, so I, uh, I asked him, Tanchigia, and then uh, the Kia, set off a memory for him, I guess. So we started chatting, so anybody and everybody. There's uh, Vivian Smith, George Pelchi, my spouse Harvey, myself. There's a few others that know a little bit, like uh, some professors at the university that I taught, um, other people in the community. Everybody. Anywhere and everywhere. Shopping, uh, playing, schools. It's starting to be, come to the schools in Brandon. Um, I've taught at, uh, at the high school level for four years, three years. Fourth year, um, I taught it at kindergarten, grade one. That's where I am right now as I go daily and I go and speak teaching Machef, the little guys. Because it's a language that's becoming extinct, it's a language that's uh, slowly not gonna be here anymore. Um, people my age so like, uh, were the last ones and there's not that many out there anymore. In the last 15 years, I used to have a data of uh, speakers you could call on these speakers anytime if there was a conference or if you wanted to do something in community where you needed someone to come, you know, just to have a conversation or go for coffee or tea. And in the last 15 years, I've had a database. In the last five years, 
about 75% are not here anymore. So it's very, very crucial that we uh, teach others to uh, anybody and anybody, like I said, who wants to learn, who's interested, because there's a keen people want to learn. They're very eager to learn because um, it's part of your identity. If we lost it, it'll be part of us that's not here because every nation has a language. And uh, if we don't have Michif here, well, part of us will be gone. Part of our identity, part of our culture will not be there because language, uh, values, uh, teachings, they're all in one, stories, they're all in one, right? So a little bit of us will not be there. So it's crucial that we teach it because it's slowly becoming extinct. That part of who and what we are, part of our identity, part of our teachings, part of our stories, part of our history would not be there. If I didn't know my language, part of me would be missing. You know, we always have that little part that's not there because every nation has language. You know, we have Michif, other people have Soto, Ojibwe, Diné, they have the Diné language, they have, that's who then what they are, that's their culture, that's their identity, that's where their history, their culture, everything comes from. It's the same with us. So if it was not there, then a part of us won't be there anymore. So that's why it's very, very, very important, very crucial that we try to, pre to uh, preserve it. We try to keep it for, gen for future generations, you know, so that we know who we are. For them to learn Michif would be kind of like having it as a family thing, uh, because not only one, but, you know, the thing is, and I'm just changing the subject here. If you if you have a child who is learning Michif, where does that child take that? You know, sure they're learning a new language, but where do they take it? Who do they communicate with? You know, you need someone to be able to communicate with in order to keep that language alive. If you don't, there's no sense in learning it because you have nowhere to take it. You have no one to converse with. You have no one to, you know, to, to use the language with. So it's very important that uh, for me to learn it as a family, or even right now I teach it at uh, preschool, uh, daycare, and grade one. But now I'm also targeting the parents because there's no sense for that little one to learn that language and not be able to use it anywhere. Because when I was growing, like when I was small, we did everything. My mom wasn't able to speak uh, any language other than Michif and French, of course, and Cree. But we at home learned at that setting. We learned everyday activities through our language, which, which was Michif. We didn't learn it in English. We didn't learn it in Cree. We didn't learn it in any other language but that. So all our daily activities were, you know, in, in, in Michif. That's how we learned and kept our language. I didn't know how to how to uh, speak English until I went to school. I knew my my numbers up to ten. My sisters they made sure they taught me, and then my uh, my alphabets up to F. But interesting enough, when uh, they did that, you know, they they had these little books called Dick and Jane at that time. They read them to me so many times that I was able to memorize those books when I went to kindergarten. You know, so, so I had at least had that advantage where they didn't, they didn't even know how to ask to go. At that time, we didn't have indoor toilets like now, you know, we had to run outside and they didn't even know how to do that, you know. So I was taught that, how to put up your hand in his bathroom, go out. Uh, but they didn't have that. So can you imagine coming into a classroom where English is the preferred language and you couldn't speak your language at all and you didn't know how to ask? It's almost like now, it's the same concept like somebody doesn't know Michif and trying to learn that Michif. And the best way to do that is doing daily activities, you know, cooking and shopping and you know, eating and all those. I 
don't think that's going to ever happen, but at the same time, um, I think it would be good because uh, you're able to, uh, it's more like a family thing, like a, you're able to speak to anybody and everybody without having to switch from English to Machif or Cree to Machif or whatever, right? Like every nation has their own language, so uh, I'm not saying everybody should learn Machif, but at the same time our people should so that we can at least communicate. At one time, uh, the elders, they spoke five or six languages, you know? So whenever they met someone that was that spoke Machif, they switched to Machif. Uh, I remember my dad doing that and my parents doing that. Cree, they switched over to Cree. You know, they, they kind of knew um, another language was, it's kind of like Machif French, we call it, but it's more French in it than the Cree. So whenever they met my auntie or a family from that family, they would switch over to that language. So can you imagine a world where all our people learn Machif, you know? And then if we met someone from a different tribe or a different nation, speak, converse with them in their language, and for them to understand us. Because everybody, we need to understand each other, you know.